We have a business leader who's just back from there as well. He wanted to get a better understanding of the war uh, to help understand how his clients are dealing with the war. The uh, company Exiger CEO, Brandon Daniels, is joining uh, the program once again. So uh, what was your personal takeaway after you spent some time there um, in Ukraine about whether or not we should keep supporting uh, the Ukrainian effort? Absolutely, Connell. Well, thank you for having me on. It's good to see you. Yep. Um, I was actually there at the same time as Schumer. In fact, our two congressional delegations were talking uh, and were working together. And so uh, Schumer and Reid and a, a number of uh, members of the Senate uh, went to leave and met with Zelensky and then a number of members of EU Parliament, of the UK House of Commons, and then also uh, Don, Dave, Don Davis and Jim Costa went with me to Kyiv and then to the surrounding areas. Um, and what we saw was a country that was resolved to beat Putin. And the other thing that we heard loud and clear as we met with uh, members of uh, parliament from the UK, EU, and other uh, US uh, ally countries mm -hmm. was that this is a critical fight for uh, Ukraine to win, not just because Ukraine is an ally, but right. because Putin is an adversary, right? Hmm. We heard directly from the sort of global community that this is a challenge uh, to Western ideals, to uh, the global free market that the United States establishes. You know, you've heard a lot about sort of the currency war and the growth of the global south sort of creating alternative currencies to the dollar. Well, this challenge that uh, Russia has launched against Ukraine is a proxy war against U.S.'s economic and diplomatic, diplomatic power throughout the world. Here's Make the real no question, Brandon, on that type yeah. of a proxy war, right? Is that if the U.S. is going to support it, if it's going to be the interest of the politicians to do so, business leaders like you to do so, and commit funds to doing so, is it a winnable war? What did you take away? What did you learn, if anything, about that when you were there? Can they win it? So I, I met with uh, members of parliament from the Ukraine, uh, met with um, uh, soldiers, uh, generals from the Ukraine. Uh, I also met with our soldiers that are on the ground in Ukraine, training Ukrainian soldiers, fighting right alongside of Ukrainian soldiers. And I know that they can win. First of all, they have uh, the hope. Uh, they have the will. And they have been working extremely efficiently mm -hmm. with the artillery and ammunition that they've been given. Connell, for every piece of artillery that a uh, brigade has today, Russia has 1,000x that amount. And they are still able to take major uh, cities back from Russia. They're able to still make major gains. Right. The offensive they had in 2023, they had no air cover, no air force whatsoever in those battles. And they caught um, uh, Putin uh, uh, without the ability to um, uh, defend his positions. And so I know that they can win because they have the hope they have the tactical skill, they're being innovative in the battlefield, and most importantly, they are determined to fight for their country. Mm -hmm. Every place I went, you heard uh, people reflect back to us, thank you to the United States right. for being a great partner, and two, glory to Ukraine across all of the uh, Ukrainian well, people. A lot of people thought it'd be over in a few days, two years ago, obviously, we're still talking about it now, but... Um, they're going to need the funding if they want to continue, which is what they were talking about at the White House today, among other things. Thank you, Brandon, for sharing your experience with us. Brandon Daniels from the company Exit. You're just back from Ukraine. The other